Welcome to Venture Ventures Actual Play D&D 5e Campaign, Episode 28. Did I say Episode 28? I don't know. Uh, but here we are. I'm Jake Friday, your Dungeon Master for the next couple hours. And uh, we are a bevy of LARPers, improvisers, writers, comedians, and uh, we're going to hopefully entertain you playing some D&D. &D. Uh, can any of you guess what animal group a bevy is from quick 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 ducks nope it's some kind of bird thing nope deer nope all right oh okay fantastic deer. i thought i thought uh that was a weird one when i first saw it on the wikipedia but that's a weird one um let's go around the table introduce yourself and the name of your character and stuff like that dave Hey guys, what's going up? Uh, going up? What's going up? Um, my character is, except he can't fly. Uh, I play a character called uh, Prodding Rod, and it's Proddy for sure, for short. And I'm really good at talking. I can relate. Lex. <laughs> Hi, I play Ashwood, the Mouse Folk Fighter. Yeah. Brian. Hi, I'm Brian. I play uh, Crispy Crispin Oakenshaft, and he is a uh, human Kensei monk. Ryan. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I play a human warlock, um, Orson Akers, also pig farmer. Perfect. And I play the dungeon master. Level dun, whatever. Dun, dun. What, what are, whatever dungeon master level are. Um, level infinite, because you're the dungeon master. Sure, sure. Uh, last time on Venture Ventures, our gang of adventurers are looking for the entrance to Mostashar, which is a floating tower in this area of the continent called the Viranal Dominion, and have been traversing some caves, and last episode ran into some Gith Zerai who are in the area and informed them that they are a scouting party because there are Illithid around. Uh, and, uh, from there, they, uh, took an interest in our monk Crispy and tested him and bets were placed. Mold was tried to be had. People tried to get some mold. Uh, <laughs> it was unsuccessful, but, uh. Debatable. Yeah, it was a very crispy centric episode last time with a lot of monk, monk stuff, and that's where we left off. It's been over a day since you guys have been with the Gith, with uh, Crispy's, Crispy's uh, repeated attempts at meditation that he just couldn't seem to, to get, but he finally did, and uh, he was given a shard of an adamantine. Citadel to provide him the wherewithal, the means by which he can get training in the future, no matter where he is in the world. And so we will say that it's the next morning, and um, no, we'll say it's like early morning. And um, the previous night, Crispy, you were given a small little uh, little book. Uh, that was very special, is very special to the monks, uh, and it's they told you, uh, Zerthraya told you that it is the Book of Zerthimen. It's kind of their Bible, for lack of a better, a better uh, term, and um, in it you find the story of the Githzerai, their, the story of their um, enslavement before to the Illithid, as well as the story of Zerthimen uh, and his prophesized return to rescue his people and take them to a better place. And um, you also find like there's a, a section of just sayings and idioms, things to live by. Uh, some of them are pretty weird and really don't make sense. Um, some of them are just obvious, like um, you can observe a lot 
uh, just by watching. Or uh, when you come to a, for a fork in the road, take it. Um, there's also your best when you're sleeping. And uh, suffering is the blowhole through which all rivers flow, which is very, very deep. I'm obviously joking. Uh, <laughs> but later that night, Crispy, you are awoken by your whip or your it's your whip, right? A warning. And yep. it's different than you've had before in terms of it's it's kind of warning you abnormally in, in a way that uh, kind of seems confused or not sure. But anyways, you're awoken by it and um, you see Zerth Ficus and Zerth Raya by the fire and you hear them uh, speaking in hushed tones. Um, you can eavesdrop, you can go back to sleep, you can, what, what do you want to do? I would absolutely love to eavesdrop. For at first, I, I will so, wake but not get up because sure. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, you're confused at first by your the way you were awoken by your whip of warning, but now that you're kind of have your bearings, you listen in, and what's weird is they're capable of telepathically communicating and they're speaking in hushed tones, and what you're able to pick up is essentially. Um, they're talking about deleting someone as a test is essentially what you in, in bits and pieces that's what you think you pick up um and that's about it before they eventually break up and go about their their night sleeping um hmm. and you can go back to sleep i'll fast forward to morning or, yep. Okay. That's um, fine. So, morning, you guys awake. You all sleep close together. So, um, is this a long rest for us? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Uh, Orson, as you guys are getting up, you see on the back of Ashwin, uh, kind of near her shoulders, uh, peeking out of her armor, you see like two wedge-shaped spots where there's no fur and there's some kind of marking. Um, huh. Yeah. Is Ashwin asleep right now? She's getting up. Like, you guys are just just getting up and you notice this on her back. Ashwin! You're kind of hardcore! I didn't even know you have markings on you! What are those? What are you What are you talking about? You know that area where you don't have any fur and you have and you have markings. They probably mean something. Probably something for your tribe or or something or some kind of spell of protection or something. Are you Are you talking about my back? I can't I can't see my back. What are you talking about? That and then I uh, point at that particular spot where I see the marks. Yeah, so it's kind of in a hard spot to reach but you definitely thought you had fur there um and hmm. no one's ever mentioned it um do you want to like taking off my armor okay and i assume you've asked orson to see how far it goes um so yeah orson check it out across the top of your your mouse folk back there's a grin like a tattoo, just a really big grin, uh, a creepy smile with all different kinds of teeth. Some of it, some of them are needle-like. Some of them are uh, herbivore-like. Some of them are, you know, there's all kinds of teeth, um, and it's just a big grin across tattoo across the back of your uh, back, across your back. Yep. This is very intense. What what does this mean? This is Yeah. I I don't know what to make of this. Neither do I. I didn't even know I had that back there. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. 
Were you Did asleep you when it? this happened? Did no! Did you play a prank when I was sleeping? Okay, if I were Not to you. play a prank, it wouldn't be that kind of a thing. I... Uh, I can't even uh, reach hey, my hey. own back. Um, I start, like, poking everybody else, like, hey! Hey, hey! Hey, did you do this to Ashwind? Uh, no, no I, I can't say I did that. Okay, Brody, this is obviously your work! Your work. One second, oh, Ryan, it's you're, it's you're turning into Robocop real, real quick. Um, your voice is... Oh. Uh, sorry to I thought I was you. going crazy. No. Oh, okay. Um, I don't hear anything. I don't know what you guys are talking about. You didn't hear anything, about. Dave? No, I just... Okay. Oh. Uh, talk, Ryan? Testing. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, that was weird. You sound fine now. Um, anyways, continue, I guess, since it went away. All right. So he starts poking Prody. Hey! Hey! Roddy, wake up! Did you do this thing to Ashwin? Uh, hey, I do the prodding around here. Don't poke me. Got him. I didn't do it. What? Oh my god, Ashwin. Wow, you, did you get drunk and get a tattoo or something? Like, what is that? That is freaky. That's like, I mean, I don't want to say like a tramp stamp, but that's like a really, that's just... That's going to scare some people. I don't know. Um, you look like one of my pigs. Good work? Yeah. 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 I mean, How much I did that cost? I don't remember anything. I didn't even know I had it. That looks painful just to like get it. You would have remembered that. Did you have any uh, strange dreams last night? Any, anything, anything out of the ordinary? I mean, I woke up halfway through the night, and, and it seemed like everything was calm and normal around here. I didn't, uh, I didn't I notice just, anyone doing something strange to your back. I just dreamt about just flying around a big mountain right near Doomerville. That was about it. It's my usual recurring dream. I and check uh, everybody else's back just in case every, yeah. everybody else, anybody else not, has works. It's not a bad idea. Do any of us have works? You uh, go to Prodi and... You see his feathers are, like, not very well-kempt. Like, he hasn't been preening like he should be. Uh, but other than that, there's no tattoo. Uh, oh, okay. And um, on Crispy, you find, like, a couple scars, which you assume are probably from when he was learning how to use his whip. Just probably real painful mistakes from the past um mm -hmm. and then do you ask someone to check your back yes um like on, you i can't see back there on your back there's a uh there's a no i was i was gonna <laughs> screw with you but uh, there's nothing whatever's on your back whatever you think is on your back or should be on your back is on your back like nothing has changed um mm -hmm. What is on your back, by the way? <laughs> oh, mine? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the only thing you notice on the back is that it it just looks a little abnormally shaped. It looks like there's a bit of a hump, like, um, where his back is. I mean, he stands pretty straight, but when you look at it, it's definitely a little bit malformed. Probably could be from farming, like, you know, having to yeah. bend over and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I, I take some charcoal from the fire and I and I have Ashwin come stand next to me and I and I draw it on the ground just so she can see exactly what it looks like. So is that not ring a bell? That doesn't look like anything you've seen before. No, that's scary. I would never put that on my back. It's certainly not your usual uh cute vibe. It's not what I would describe. No, I would never tamper with my fur that way. My fur is very precious, and now and it's ruined. Yeah, there's no fur. It's very smooth. It's not sensitive. The 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 skin where the uh, creepy smile is, um, but there, it's definitely almost like there was never fur there to begin with. It's just completely smooth, um, and doesn't hurt or isn't sore. Like it. So, so it doesn't. Does it look fresh? For the people who can see it? It looks like 
it looks it doesn't look uh weathered it doesn't look like a weathered tattoo it looks very bright and vibrant but but healed but healed so like pristine tattoo does that make sense yeah and do you have a good mental image of what the tattoo looks like or good enough that you could i mean feel free based on what i described to you you know yeah make yeah it... giant creepy smile yeah with weird looking teeth of different kinds and stuff like that do you guys do you guys recognize this or is it just like a picture no, like not am that i part I of a gang not. now you you might be <laughs> maybe some gods come in and claimed you uh is, the, is it the sign of a religion or a religious symbol that i've seen in my travels across the country or anything make a religion check Sure. Uh, hmm, 15. Nope, you're not sure. I've never seen that in my life. That is terrifying. So I guess when we uh, when we get into some fights, just run in backwards. It uh, <laughs> should prove a more intimidating uh, visage. But then I would have to take my armor off. You might also have to take your armor off for that to work. <laughs> kind of like the armor. Ah, uh, you'll be me. fine. You'll be fine. And you, what kind of armor do you wear? Is it heavy armor? It, it's it's leather armor. Oh, okay, so it would take. I don't. I don't remember offhand what the doffing time is for that armor. I'm sure it's like a minute for leather armor, but. Le I think it's even less for leather. Oh, is it? Is it like? Yeah, okay. light armor is real fast. Okay. Um. I was just thinking if it was heavy, it'd be five minutes later. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Um, is there anything you want to discuss with Prati? We can say uh, like either in the morning or the night before, do a little flashback, Ashwin. Yeah, yeah. I do want to talk to him. Okay, go uh, ahead. So, uh, Prati, I really want to know why... Are you so fascinated with collecting all these rods? It's nothing about fascination. It's you just have to understand, Ashwin. I mean, I'm not I'm not a kick ass champion like you are. Um, and I would love to learn more about how you became a champion at some point. But you know, I come from the ghettos of Doomerville. I grew up dirt poor having to having to steal having to steal food having to you know i had to make counterfeit money just to survive and i'm gonna take any i'm gonna take anything i can get to get an advantage and if i can get a a magical item like the rod of seven parts which i've heard is extremely powerful when you put everything together i'm gonna do it because you know i just I feel like a little bit just vulnerable in the world. So do you, why do you think then taking someone else's life to make you more powerful is good? I don't consider, <laughs> I don't consider, uh, Iris a life. Like the way I understand constructs is, is someone built a mechanism and then and then attached some sort of demon spirit to her and that's that's what she is she's not like a person she's not a she's not what i would consider something that has a soul um so i'm i'm not trying to kill her anymore i'm trying to figure out how to separate the uh I think she has the third piece of the rod in inside of her. I'm trying to figure out how to separate that from her and put her in some sort of stasis so that I can figure I'm not trying to kill her. Um, I, I did try to, I did try to kill her once. I mean, if you count me trying to rip out her heart, killing her, then yeah, I tried to kill her. <laughs> but the second time, the second time I didn't, I did, I attacked her. All I did was try to turn her into a cockroach. I didn't try to kill her. Um, and she would have only been a cockroach for an hour while I figured out what to do with her. But, um, 
I did that answer your question? I guess I want to help you. I think you're a good guy, but I think there's better ways about going to get what you want without fighting. And that's coming from me. Coming from you, Ashwin? Yes. That you don't have to fight and take things to get what you want. And I want to help you, but I think we need to work on, you know, appreciating all forms of life. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't think you should, I'm not a like, good person. Like, I am okay with just being, like, I try to help people in whatever way I can. It doesn't necessarily fit with what most people would consider a good person. And I'm not concerned with trying to trying to be try to please other people and do what they think is is good i'm just i'm trying to just find hags kill them and i'm gonna lie cheat and steal to just like kick ass and i'm gonna i just don't i don't like anyone in a position of authority and i'm gonna take down all these corrupt uh powerful people that sh shit on the little guy i'm just i'm just sick of it. it it sounds like you live a very hard life but i choose to believe that it would get better and we'll teach each other things uh i'm so i'm open yeah i'm open to that uh Ashra, i hope you're right <laughs> she reaches down into her, the bag of holding and gives priority the the piece of the rod wow really i whoa I'm thank you to ashwin believe in you. thank but you but you have to do better thank you whoa and prati i guess i have to roll for some sort of identification or something sure um it's it's simple enough to see that it will not fit like the brakes on the first rod you got. Okay, so Prady pulls out pulls out the other piece from his cloak and he just like looks at it. And He's you like, know, oh, this must be the third piece. So he puts he puts not together, but he puts both pieces separately in his cloak, and he he gets out his map mimic map mimic to see if he could see if the second piece is nearby. So the second piece is uh, you've probably looked at this daily, if not multiple right, times yeah. per day. And previously, um, it was still in in the mountain ranges of the Virinal Dominion to the west of you, though. And this morning, when you look at it, it is. Uh, northwest and very far west to on a portion of the map in the center of um i can show you after the stream but it's in the center of um let me i'm just gonna pull it up real quick because i can't help myself and i'm just you know making little cute noises to my map mimic like <laughs> 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 Prati, if you ever want to get stronger, I can teach you if you would like. We can teach you how to fight. Really? Yeah, I would yeah. take you up on that. I'm up for getting better at stuff. I don't ever throw punches or use my dagger as much, so yeah, I'd like to get better. I can teach you all sorts of things. Awesome. You don't need no magic. Uh, okay. I mean, magic is good, but, you know, <laughs> fists are nice, too. <laughs> Can you not do any rituals or any spells whatsoever? No. I, okay. I grew up in a village, and I was I tried everything, and I wasn't good at anything except fighting. So I stuck with that. When did you realize you were a good fighter? It was the last thing on the list of jobs where I came up, where I grew up. <laughs> you took a personality test? <laughs> no, it was more of like, oh, 
you could do this and you could do that. And I tried every, literally every single job that uh-huh. my village had to offer and fighting was the last thing I tried. So it worked out. It kind of uh-huh. had to work out. Otherwise I how might does, have been kicked out. How does a uh, mouse folk try fighting? The same way anyone else fights. Did you pick a fight with somebody? No, you you go to school for it and you learn. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then Got you it. become part of a squad. Nice. It, it, it takes a while to train, but I don't know. Is that how you fight? You just pick a fight with people? That's how I first uh, tried fighting. That's not very I just smart, picked though. a fight with some... Uh, some raccoons when I was just a wee little crow. Kenku. Don't, don't fight my cousins. It's not nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, on your map mimic, the mark, again, because it's such a wide view of the continent, um, is somewhere in the center of the area um, that you traveled through on the train um okay probably now a few weeks ago um kind of in a natural uh bay to the north obviously not as massive as uh the bay of Invir, which is in the center but just a small little indentation in the geography it's hovering around there and um yeah there's no name for it or anything? There is. Uh, I just need to look it up. Okay. But it tells you when you look at it. Oh, got it. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. This is where this is where Iris must be. I wonder what she's doing there. This is pretty far away from, from us. I don't know what she's doing, but I guess she's done helping us. Maybe she's hiding from you. I doubt that. She kicked my ass. Like, she, like, was so fast that I could not even react to her slashing. Slashing? Yeah, she she cut me. Well, like I said, we'll work on your fighting skills, so... Hopefully she doesn't get the best of you next time. Oh, I've got, I'm ready for her if she actually attacks me again. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not strong enough to take on her. So I think, I think the best thing to do is just to find someone who can tell me how to, how to take her apart, which I think is Felix Tricknip. So that's not my to-do list to talk to Felix. Okay. That's well, like the equivalent of someone saying, hey, Lex, I'm going to go talk to the equivalent of Steve Jobs. It's like when he was alive. So that's that's the equivalent um, type of thing there. Yeah, and I know he's, yeah. you know, up in his ivory tower and he's busy building trains that run on magic and everything. But he's going to take time for me, okay? Because... I've been through a lot of shit because of him. I've had to deal with a lot of the messes that he made. Okay, so he's going to talk to me. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep thinking that. <laughs> so um, if you guys are, are uh, through with that conversation, we can continue later or now if you like. But... Um, you guys have breakfast, um, and right when you guys are sitting down with the uh, other guests awry, they're making very basic, a lot of it is mold, the mold that you guys gathered, uh, the non-violent type, and um, <laughs> there is some very interesting fruit that is multi-layered when you it's it's probably the size of a plum when you bite into it it's multi-layered and there's like crystalline uh there's like a crystalline formation uh just below below the uh fruity top layer um but it's pretty sweet it does it's unlike anything you've 
taste it in terms of texture, but um, it's it's not too disgusting. And they tell you that it's from uh, the grow houses of Limbo that are essentially all created by the Anarch of that citadel um, and wherever the various citadels are. Um, and while you're kind of talking about this and, and eating and bonding, if you like, um, really quickly, uh, you feel in quick succession someone burrowing into your consciousness and just going, secret, 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 so let me see what's in here. Blah, 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 blah. And if you want to resist it, make a deception check. You say deception? Deception. 17. Not 20 for a 19. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Nat 20 for a 25. Nice. Ooh. Uh, and I rolled a 21. Okay. Look at us go. <laughs> um, the only person who resists it is uh, Orson. Um, and as soon as you, you feel something, it's almost, it's almost like a physical sensation. Like someone is like, flipping through a Rolodex in your brain. And mm -hmm. um, when you try to resist, and those of you that fail, uh, it feels like someone's just slapping like a hand away. And they just continue. And for you, Orson, um, they slap your hand, your, your metaphorical hand, whatever, I don't, figurative hand, and uh, you're able to resist it. Um, and that's that that happens pretty quickly within 30 seconds um and you look around and you don't it is my whip tickling my ear at all it's going like this it's doing that weird uh confused gotcha thing um yeah uh... do i consciously like I resisted it. Do I know that something messed with me, or it something just tried to mess with you? Uh, hmm. But you're not damaged. N none of you are damaged in any way. It just feels a little like somebody extracted something, like a secret from you or something. It just feels a little bit violating, I guess, for lack of a better term. But I pop up. Whip in hand, on alert. Are the gith around? Yeah, they're just sitting there eating, and uh, you know, you guys were just in the middle of talking about these fruits and you know, breaking bread, and uh, this just boom, 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 boom to each one of you. They don't appear affected. Nope, they're not looking like it. Oh. I look around and say, "Y'all feel that? Yeah, something's, yeah. something's here." And then, I, yeah, I, I felt it, didn't appreciate it. And um, uh, Zerth Raya looks up and says, kind of squints and looks at his other brothers and uh, says, Just, did you feel someone poking in your brain? or Much like, yeah. Flipping through yeah. it felt like. Very uncomfortable. We don't think it... We had a similar experience, but we don't think it is the elder brain that controls illithid colonies. Uh, we think that there's a limited area in which an elder brain can have an effect. It could be the Nothic... in the tunnel you all say, you are saying that like i should know what that means so he tells you that generally i think one of you rolled for it last game uh i think it was i did Orson, yeah. yeah uh would you have told um anyone about yes. your knowledge okay 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's basically okay. a spellcaster. At one point, was normal uh, in some res in most respects, and then just pursued lich dumb or arcane secrets, secrets in general, and did anything to further its knowledge and arcane uh powers and had some sort of change take place through its experiments and 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 stuff like that um and orson told you basically the same and you get the same from <coughs> zerth raya who mm -hmm. uh adds that um many he says many are worshipers of the whispered one and uh yeah well you all you all have been in these caves longer than we have have has this not given you any trouble outside yeah, of whatever did, just happened it did tr do that to us and for most of us it was successful but you know they we don't know what they took or what it found but likely it's more of a form of protection in case a creature has ill intentions towards it um, it can bargain or hold hostage some secret information that maybe the creature doesn't know so my worry is if they just pulled something out of our brains if anyone else might have access to that I don't, I don't know what this Not creature's that... working with or for. Yeah, they're very solitary. They cannot work with other creatures. Nope. They do. All right. Some do have the ability to create thralls or um, mm. things like that. And um, Zerth Ficus is kind of kind of looking around suspiciously it's very he's very suspicious gith in general and a prick pretty much but um so you're not sure if that's like his resting you know what face but uh <laughs> he gets up and uh walks out to the cave and um you hear like clinking of of swords and metal like there's some sort of something going on just outside the cave which is probably 50 to 75 feet away from you guys i'm there in a second mm -hmm. and if yeah whoever wants to I also go rush over. okay yeah I'll rush over. my speed is 55 feet i'm there instantly <laughs> yep uh you see uh zerth ficus aggressive taking an aggressive stance and there's four creatures Prada, you've seen this creature a creature like this before it's a f uh, family of four flumps and uh, oh. look like this little guy um focus camera focus anyways <laughs> um basically levitating tentacles um, they look very scared, uh, and they're kind of cowering, um, and Zerth Ficus is saying something in some language you don't understand, um, and, uh, probably cursing though, you think, and, um, in your heads you hear, uh, various voices, all of you at the same time from each of the different flumps. Don't let him hurt us, please. We're just, we're just hungry, please. And uh, yeah. Prady just goes, caw, caw, caw. He tries to like stand in between uh, Zerth Ficus and the flumps. It's just like caw, caw, caw. Uh, Ficus says, "I'm not going to hurt them. I just think they're disgusting." And. Zerth Raya comes out and and says, uh, "Ah, yes, 
flumps. Is that your word form that here as well? He says to anyone um, of you guys. Well, I, I can't say I've seen them, but uh, seems like our friend here has. Yeah, you've heard of the word flump, but you like anything more than that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Raya basically says they are harmless for the most part. They feed on psychic energy. Usually they are found near illithid colonies and other such uh, areas of psionic convergence. Uh, but they're mostly harmless, mostly good. Uh, our former brethren, the Gith Yankee, kill them on sight, but we are much kinder, aren't we, <coughs> Brother Ficus? And uh, Ficus just stares at the flump and then the flumps and walks away. Um, they start saying to all of you, um, we, we, we know things, we've, we've, we've seen things, we can give you secrets, please don't hurt us. What, what kind of kind secrets? Of... <laughs> the, 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 the Nothic, uh, there's a Nothic next door, did you, did you know that? Yeah, the, in, when we're in that one area where it splits into three parts, I know it's the left side that we're, we didn't want to go to. So I know that it's there. I imagine that I thought there was going to be more than one. So there's at least only one. It, it's just, it's just one. It has, it has guardians, things that it's made in there, in its treasure. It's, it's covered in books every, everywhere, stacks and stacks of books all the way to the ceiling in some parts of its cavern and it's, area that you can't even see the walls of the of the cavern there's so many books and it has a just these flumps are all kind of adding to each other uh just bearing everything they know that they think could possibly Prati Prati just does an impression of a radio going like yeah. oh my god books I love I love books so much and he just does like a perfect <laughs> British accent He's just talking about books because he's excited about the prospect of there being books with actual text in them and like the possibility. Uh, none of you know what, like you've heard of a radio, but you're not quite sure what he's doing. Um, and then when you realize Prati that nobody really understands it, you feel kind of sad because. Um. Yeah, and he just telepathically talks to the big bedfellows and just says, "Oh yeah, yeah, my my traveling uh, companion, uh, Aradia. She used to be one of the big bedfellows. She was really into books, and she was really sad since the erasure because there were just so many books that had been erased. So this sounds like a treasure trove that we have to go explore and just see what's down there." I agree. Well, I, was, I was leaning towards uh, avoiding this Nothic, but. Yeah, I, I gotta agree with you as well. And the flumps tell you that uh, the Nothic has a doll, uh, a doll that moves and stalks the flumps. Like, it leaves the Nothic's caverns and, like, just giggles at them and just stalks them and doesn't do anything and they hate the little thing. Uh, but they know that the Nothic hates when this doll leaves the area and um, says that it's very ugly and has one big purple eye in the center and a little malformed, tiny, tiny, tiny pea-sized eye off to the side that just kind of bleeds black ichor um and um vertical mouth with sharp needle-like teeth that clack anytime it feels threatened or um angry that it can't figure something out 
Um, yeah, N these flumps are are terrified of you guys, and there's nothing that makes you think that these things, and especially those of you who've ran into flumps, like um, they're not. They're harmless and they're not, they look harmless and they're not, um, uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Well, that's, uh, it's down the smelly hole, right? Yes, the center hole, as it, as it um. Well, uh, Ficus, Raya, or... Hey, Ashwin. Going along? I talked to tell I, te I telepathically talked to Ashwin, and I'm like, "Hey, can you ask? I know this is gonna. You're not gonna recognize this name, but can you ask one of the flumps if they know if they know what happened to Beta Skrieg, and if he's if they know where he is, and if they they might know where Felix Tricknips is. Uh, sure. Beta Skrieg. Just tell him Beta. the name Beta Skrieg. Who is Beta Skrieg? Oh, Ashwin we, just shouts that out. We don't know. We uh, we wish we did, but we don't want to lie to you, and uh, uh, we're not very good liars, anyways. Uh, that's essentially what we don't know who that is. Um, never heard that name. Yeah. What about Felix Chicknit? Do you know uh, him? We've heard the Nothic say uh those words before but never together and never very much uh, he's usually it's usually uh saying things telepathically uh kind of screaming telepathically almost uh when it gets angry when an experiment fails or or when it's dolly gets lost uh do any of you speak uh do any of you speak under common? No, but no. I can uh, I can cast. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I can cast uh, comprehend languages. Would that help? Uh, we we're not magic users. Is, is it is that a spell? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's a spell. I don't know. You'd probably know. It's an Eldritch invocation. What the hell is that? <laughs> no, they. <laughs> uh, but they're very confused. They're not spellcasters, and um, they say. Okay, you, you I, say I'll just. Better. I'll just tell them like. I'm just like languages. I speak them all. Oh yeah, so you speak under common. Okay, yeah, it speaks under common. Uh, we don't know if it speaks any other languages. Is there anything else we can tell you? We think we've told you everything, and they all talk to each other. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, and then they start talking about, um, like, favorite memories, and they're like, oh, that one time we were safe in the mountain for over two years. That's basically it. I do ask them if they've seen any illithid. Oh, yeah. Uh, or felt them. They they moved uh to the east in the in the mountain range they used to be in this area and then they moved east for some reason we don't know but uh they 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 tried to kill some of us and uh you know one of them got uh says the name of the one behind it and some of its tentacles are missing um but uh yeah so it says yes got it and uh, to answer your question, Brian, about Zerth, Raya, and Ficus, and the two ah, yeah. monks, uh, they don't really, um, they'll go with you, but they're, they're just weary because, um, you know, it's not their mission, but uh, they'll back you guys up. Well, I say we go uh, take care of this and see what these books are all about. So, Ashwin, you want to take point with me? Sure, and I'll climb on the shoulder. Okay, and marching. And order. we we will be stealthing up in front. Okay, uh, Zerth Ficus is going to take the back behind Zerth Raya. 
the rest of you? Marching? Yeah, I just, I'll just uh, follow right behind. Okay. Um, and I'm just still talking like a radio, like, oh, we're going to find some wonderful first editions and very rare books. My first, putting... oh, my first boyfriend was a first edition. <laughs> I'm putting myself a good 30 feet in front of the noisy kanku behind me, hoping that, <laughs> hoping that something pops out and doesn't see me. <laughs> uh, you guys exit and um, are in the, the divided, um, the three, the fork in the road, essentially. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we should take it. I just read about this. Sure. There's a fork in the road. We should take that? it. Yeah. And, uh, of course. I think we need a nice You're reading a uh, Yogi Berra's <laughs> book. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> you get me. Some of them were Yogi Berra. Um, uh, yeah, as soon as you, like 20 feet into that second cave, all of you here telepathically secrets sought secrets desired secrets found here are yours free of charge gift to me to find my dear dolly gift your destination to tricky tower towering over dominion find dolly dear and it starts uh immediately after it says that it starts saying revenant unique seeker born of erasure's death dead walking dead unfamiliar Dead seeks answer to questions unknown. Stars watch one especially. Surreptitiously signals truth. Misery loves company. Mementos some false. And it seamlessly goes into the next one. Jokes play thing. Lucky jokes found. Fortunate joke fortunately found. Fellows, power will require revenge for promises unkempt uncared for flock plaything in pen will pen soon prophesized prophet this is the next one prophesized prophet prophetically propagates paltry pelagrationary penis punch the punch down their poet pipes and pied piper plays its pipes prime your pick to pick your prime peregrination next one dark peaks furtive fairy tales mastered ceremony requires death for paltry sum hugger mugger takes more time as it creeps on wall of door calling apocalypse reigns forest calls and um then it goes those are your secrets i found for you that you don't know those are free but please find my dolly dearest dearest dolly dolly dearest i love it so or what that's all you hear <laughs> I think it wants us to find his dolly. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm what, good. This is that was. What did he just? That was a lot of noise. Did any of you understand any of that? No. I know I that know. one of those paragraphs was about me. I think there was like different chunks of each of our secrets. So in there, when it says when you when you're confused, it repeats it exactly the same way. It says, secrets sought, secrets desired, secrets found, here are yours, free of charge, gift to me to find my dear Dolly, gift your destination to Tricky Tower, towering over Dominion, please find dear Dolly, Dolly dear, and then it, do you guys want to hear the rest of it? I'm okay. okay. We're good. I, I'm putting my pod down, we have too many missions, I don't care about the doll. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just that I think this is how we're gonna have to get to the tower, though. Apparently, he's one of the secrets he's picked up. Is that how it's gonna tell us how we get up to the tower? Which, frankly, I I don't know how we're gonna do that yet. Of course, we could just try to beat it out of him and see if I he'll know. tell us then. I think it's probably not gonna be that hard to find this dolly. I don't think. I what what is your hesitancy to to find a doll? Oh, I, I got. No, go, go. I, I have an idea. We are trying to just find something that's doll-like, right? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, we could, but I have another way to do this. Um, so 
he casts um, Unseen Servant, uh -huh. and nice. he does a command to find doll-like things and bring him back. Uh, okay, so... Very nice. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking of uh, casting one of those like animals. Uh, what do you call it? Um, when you have like a familiar, yeah. Oh, Some yeah. familiars out. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I give Orson uh, one of those uh, inspiration die. Okay, there you go. It's the best idea I've heard all day. It's a D6. It ends at the end of this game. That goes Ooh. away if it's unused. Um, your unseen servant, let's see, has a range of 60 feet, so you have to stay within 60 feet. Mm -hmm. How big is this section that we're in? Well, you're in a small hallway that continues down for you don't know how long. Um, and your unseen servant... Um, takes your command where do you want it to go do you want it to continue down or go back and look around um i will have it continue down first and when i if i can't is it like super dark where we're at like can yeah. i oh, okay outside of like Ooh. your light the light you're providing um mm -hmm. yeah beyond that it's completely dark okay the fl the flumps were talking about the doll when did they say when they last saw it wasn't the doll following them they did say that. Hmm. Hold on one second, and I sprint back to where <laughs> we talk to the flumps to see if they're still there. You see, uh, you hear the the uh, cartoonish noise of bup, 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 and then Crispy takes Pew. off in a cloud of dust. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait! <laughs> yeah, Ashwin, you can... <laughs> If you want to try to hold on. I don't want to make it. I mean, can I just say you fall off, but you land on your feet? Yeah. Cool. Um, you find yourself falling all of a sudden because Crispy's taken off, and you acrobatically land on your feet. Um, it's impressive to the Gith Zerai, but not impressive to your fellow. It could be impressive still, but they've seen you do crazy shit like that constantly. Um mm -hmm. I am always running. I run everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so when you Just get back kidding, to the pumps, do they're um, not there, but you quickly see them kind of hiding in the shadows, uh, still very scared about their encounter, and with especially Zerth Ficus. Um, <laughs> and they cower some more when you show up after we're sprinting that fast. Mm-hmm. And I stop up short on a, of them and just say, when was the last time you saw that doll? The one that laughs at you. Oh, it was down there. Uh, uh, if you go back down the, the tunnel, um, we, we were in, you have to go left or, uh, and tells you where. And it's basically down the tunnel and there's a little crack, a, a small crack that you have to slip through. And there there's a cavern in there that they were hanging out in. Um, so this is the third path. We went down one. The Nothic's down another. This is down the third. Down where you came from, uh, where you had fought the Zorbos and the Shard Mine. They're not. Gotcha. They're not saying it's all the way down. They're saying it's just part of the way down. Then you have to hang a left and um, down a, a crack where there's some lichen growing up in a uh, pretty pattern. Hmm. They say. I. I grab my ear and tell this to my party, whoever has one of the earrings. I hear you telepathically. Yeah, you want. Uh, I think do all of you have? Well, I I don't have mine anymore, but... You don't need it. Um, uh, I think Ophidian. Ashwin got it, or did... Yeah, I got it. Okay. Cause I... There's one in my equipment. Yeah. I didn't put it there. I did. Um... <laughs> I took it out of Richards and gave it to you. Yeah, uh, that's what I figured. Uh, Crispy doesn't know how it got there, but um, nevertheless, he has it. Perfect. Um, so yeah, I know how to use it too. Um, <laughs> you guys hear all that, and uh, you can go. And out. I oh. and I keep running in that direction. I don't um, think Orson has anything like that. Um. Yeah. Because... We'll just bring you along. Because, okay. uh, well, you're standing next to Ashwin. She can tell you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
So you guys head back, and the flumps are cowering in terror. Um, mm -hmm. These poor little flumps. Um, and you head back, and sure enough, you're just scanning the left side of the cavern as you're going back, putting your light up. Uh, about an hour later, because you're scanning everything so carefully, you do see kind of a hidden behind a set of rocks, kind of like, uh, it's clear to you when you find it that that's that it's easily missed. Um, mm -hmm. And you guys have to squeeze through there, and it's very difficult uh, for some of you, not so much for others, um, but you find yourself in a like 15 by 15 foot cavern and then another little tunnel can come uh continues and you hear giggling you hear <laughs> <laughs> that'll be it no let's go back this way guy <laughs> no that sounds like a that sounds like a doll slash goat you gotta go that way <laughs> definitely a doll goat yep I hear it too, um, but that's not in the cavern we're in. That's like down this new hallway. It's down the the yeah the hallway that connects to that new cavern. Um, Anything interesting in this cavern? <laughs> I'll make a perception check unless you're using your hands and fingers to poke around. No, I'm not. Uh, but I did get a twenty-one. Yeah, it's just um, you do see some of that moss that uh, actually you didn't know about that moss. So that moss looks like mm -hmm. moss and and uh, mold, but it doesn't look gross. Yeah, that's about if it. it's mold. All right, <laughs> I press on. And or uh, we press on as you continue. Ashwin and Crispy are taking the lead. Then it's um, the same marching order. You hear the laughs going. <laughs> Back. I'm gonna play. <laughs> nope, not play time. You're small like me. Hey, we're gonna play forever. <laughs> it sounds like Mickey Mouse now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, does that mean I don't see it anywhere? Can any do any of you see it? Apparently, you can see us. Like, no, no, I don't see it. I'm gonna make don't you see play. It. What? I don't like the sound of that. I don't. Right? Not very nice. Okay, what game do you want to play? Uh, while you guys are hearing that, one sec. Dun dun dun, let me look this up. Uh, Ashwin, make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Two. Six. <laughs> oh. oh no. You're good. right oh, next no. to my head. Uh it tells you Come play with me without those others. Come run away from them. <laughs> Come to the voice. And you jump off of Crispy's shoulders and run forward into the darkness. Hey, where are you going, Ashwin? And she is much quicker than you guys in these confined in this confined tunnel. And she goes off and doesn't say anything. She can outpace meats too? Bummer. In the tunnel portion, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know you're a medium creature, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that would is there, like, are you unimpedable? Me? Uh... Yeah. No. Okay. Just real fast. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're definitely going faster than your the other the others behind you, and the Zerths are behind Froddy mm -hmm. and Orson, so they're not able to do anything either. Um, I guess I have the mobile feet, but that doesn't really have anything mechanically that makes me unimpedable um i could that's think, more disengaging yeah. i could think about it's all good yeah it's all but, good um it's fine i'm cool with it so she runs off and you guys i assume keep going or you just walk away and leave 
<laughs> Bye, Ashwin. <laughs> Bye, Ashwin. You get to play forever. <laughs> uh, and Orson is going to go in the same direction as Ashwin because, like, this is like this yeah. all ends a nope to this. <laughs> so, um, when you get there, Prati's Prati's pretty small. He like runs after her, but he's—I don't think he's considered a small character. He's considered a medium, maybe. He's like four foot nine or no, something. I think he's considered medium. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I see your point. Um, yeah. So you guys are, it's not going to take a long time to catch up because you enter this massive chamber. You don't know how big it is because it's beyond your light. Uh, and you hear giggling and Ashwin, you hear Ashwin kind of grunt as uh the the giggle says to you play with me and throws a rock at you it hits you i'm not gonna say it does damage um but you have to throw it back and as soon as you throw it back you're kind of like why am i doing this and you're very freaking annoyed uh that you were just charmed essentially and um let me check another spell. Bum, bum, bum. About to get wrecked. Pissing. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just keep failing these? <laughs> I'm dumb, okay? <laughs> You're fun to play with. Make another wisdom saving throw, Ashwin. Okay, I like this. 18. Yes. Uh, you feel this compulsion come over you, a different kind, similar to the one you just felt. A stronger kind. You're so pissed off, you shrug it off. And you're like, I'm not going to play with you. And Not today, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. You're not like you either. And it's going to um, uh, it's going to suggest to you, Prati, as you enter the cavern, you come play with me now. Wisdom save, Prati. You guys can't see anything. It's dark. Ten. Um. Yeah, so basically you run off into the darkness, another rock hits you, no damage, but you feel this compulsion to pick up a rock. And now we're going to roll initiative because I wanted to have these suggestions go off like that. Uh, so roll your initiatives. I wrote down initiatives already. Where did I put that? Uh, where did I put them? All right, I'll just roll it again. 15. Dirty 20. Nice. 18 for me. Uh, should we light a torch? Should we light a torch or like some lights or something? My first question was going to be, so who has light on them? Because I can't see. I think, <laughs> which one of you were doing it before? Somebody was, yeah. Uh, uh I... Nihilus was. I have light if you want. I have a cantrip that does light. So I, maybe I had it on already. Yeah, that's I figured... Yeah, with Nihilus gone, we would have asked you to do it. <laughs> and how, what's the distance on light? 20 foot radius. And then it... So that's 40 foot sphere. And but I, think it's tw I think it's 20 bright, 20 dim, isn't it? So it's 80 feet if you're counting the dim light. I could have sworn touch, that's what light was. I would have touched like my rod, and I would that would have been the thing that's emanating... Bright light in a twenty foot radius and dim light for an additional twenty feet. Yeah, so like an eighty foot kind of bright sphere inside a skate inside of the cave. At the edge of your the dim light, uh, you see kind of a bulge of darkness that is abnormally not allowing the light to continue in a certain area. You got rods, you got bulges, get all sorts of stuff. Uh, 
You said it, not me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> you had the 15. Was it Proddy? No, uh, it was Orson. Yeah, I had 15. Would you have Prod? 14. Got it. And, okay. So, uh, it is the Dell's turn again because it rolled real well. And the, you see that weird darkness bulge just kind of move in the dim light. Uh, and uh, it's moving to the side towards one of the Zerths, uh, kind of tr just trying to get to the back of you guys. Um, and is going to giggle, but this time its giggle is extremely loud and haunting and kind of in not a good way. It tickles your like throat and brain and makes you want to throw up. Uh, and they're going to roll. And you see Zerth uh, Ficus go, uh, uh, and starts throwing up and... Some liquid comes out of his non-nose, his the holes where his nose should be, um, and definitely looks terrified and is looking for a way to get out of there. Um, and now it is Ashwin's turn. Great. Do you uh, make a just the. No, I'm just going to say you see the bulge, the darkness bulge. Uh, how close are we towards the bulge? 80. Alright. Um. Then I'm going to take out my longbow. Okay. And attempt, and attempt to shoot. Into the darkness? Shoot the direction, yeah. Okay, disadvantage. <laughs> What does disadvantage mean again? Uh, you roll D, uh, the d20 twice, and you take the lower number. Damn it. I didn't think I could get lower than that. Great. <laughs> A nine. So as you pull back, you see pretty it good. shoot off into the d general direction uh, of that you want it to, but you don't know if it hit anything because it flies into this very dark area. And you don't hear any telltale signs of of uh, someone being injured. Uh, is there anything else right. you'd like to do, or do you have another attack? Yeah, I'm gonna try that again. Do it. Oh no! I just rolled a nat one. Okay. Oh no. I'll just say like. Um, you ba you basically just destroy um, the arrow. It doesn't go anywhere near anything. You don't hit anyone else, but the arrow splinters. Uh, you're probably very frustrated. This doll is making people do things they don't want to do. It's a fucking doll, and you shatter the arrow, uh, just pulling it back wrong, and it, yeah, that's it. Grr. Is there anything else? Bonus action? Uh, not now. Are you gonna move closer? Can Can I still do that? You have movement, yeah. Yeah. Then I would like to move as close as I can towards the the darkness. What's your movement? Twenty five. Now it is crispy, crispy, crispy. All right, I'm going to 
Well, I was thinking I was going to try and shoot my longbow, but after seeing Ash's attempt at that, I'm no longer inspired to do that. Um, so I'm going to go for broke. I'm going to take a second, breathe in real deep, close my eyes well ahead of time, and run straight forward to the darkness and just beeline in a straight line dash. from where I am. Um, I'm just going to actually adjust my movement. Which is? 55 feet. Okay. Um, does that get me into the darkness? Hold on. Math, 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 math. Uh, fuck. Come on, Jake. Bye, Crispy. I don't think I'm doing it. Yeah, I am doing it right. Um, darkness. One second. Boy. Mm -hmm. No, it does not. It's about the front, the edge of the darkness, about 10 feet ahead of you. Okay. Then I'm going to, uh, I'll bonus action step of the wind to dash. To get into the darkness. And as you go in there, it's magical darkness, and Crispy probably has never experienced that. But it's. My eyes are closed anyway. Yeah. It's utter darkness. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you hear. <laughs> you want to play? And um, then I. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the darkness. I assume I didn't like step on a doll as i ran <laughs> in um so i will take take a knee and then hold my action um to i'll hold my stillness of mind in case it tries to burrow in my brain what does that do and i can use an action to end an effect that's causing me to be charmed or frightened so it seems like it's getting in people's heads so i'm just going to focus my mental abilities in case it tries to burrow in my head, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna harden harden up my brain. Okay, so you harden your brain, and you hold out your arms. I don't know if you're doing this, but it's funny to me. You're on one knee, like give me a hug. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to bait it in or something. Like, sure. give me, come on, we'll come on. Works. We'll see if it works. Orson, it doesn't. Your turn. How far am I from the bulging darkness? 80. 80. Okay, then. Then I'm going to go towards the darkness and then use dash to close it, mm -hmm. um, to close the distance. So I will be like how, um, within 20 feet. How far is your dash? 60? Um, yeah, so it'd be 60. Okay. I think that would be my action. Cool. Um, guys, let's take a break. I need a bathroom break. Yeah, sure. And unfortunately, I can't uh, run off and sneak away real quick. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back in five minutes. Great.
All right, we're back. Um, and uh, it was Orson's turn. Now it is Prodi's turn. Am I bad, or am I am I under the doll's? You have not charm. Yeah, you're 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 um, uh, cause it uh, what what was your roll again? I'm sorry. It was a ten. Oh shit. Um, yeah, no, the same thing happens. It, it threw a rock at you, and you woke up. I think I already said this. Um, and you picked up the rock, threw it back, and then you're like immediately released from whatever charm it was. Okay. And, um. Yeah, so basically, you're very confused as to why you lost control of yourself. Probably a little angry, that's up to you. Um, but uh, you're 60 feet away and what, from this darkness globe. Why do I... Why would I even want to throw a rock back and forth? It's silly. Oh, God. Where's... What? <laughs> What's that bulge over there? Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, wait, what? <laughs> I, uh, oh, okay. Are the, are Crispy and, uh, Orson like, but like, and I can't see where they are. All I see is like, you see Orson. okay. But Crispy's too close. Crispy is in this magical darkness. You cannot see through. The bulge is large. It's, it's tens of feet across. Okay. It's a very large bulge. I'm in the bulge. It's happy to see us. I we're not happy to see it. No. So I I will cast uh sickening radiance. I think I can I can cast it up to 120 feet. So I cast sickening radius, but I like hedge my bet and I put the point of origin like behind the bulge to try to not get crispy. You have to be able to see the the your target. Or is, is it a saving throw or an attack? It just it's an it's a saving throw. So it's uh. What does the spell say? It just says uh, d a dim greenish uh, greenish light spreads with a thirty foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range. The light spreads around corners and it lasts until the spell ends. Thirty foot that's, diameter you know, or radius. You said thirty foot radius. So I'm trying to put it basically. 30 feet behind the the bulge so There's that like it just room, but you can try to do that you, you the the edge of the wall of this room is is not is closer than 30 feet does that than the darkness does that make sense yeah i do it just because yeah so i go so Prady just goes like i think i might hit crispy with this with this sickening radius, but I don't know how, how else we're going to find this little fucker. So I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal, uh, uh, crispy with, a with, uh, some bonus actions. Okay. So <laughs> Not what, that anyone knows what bonus actions are, but saving throw, uh, it's a constitution 14. Okay. Go crispy. That's out of the 12. Constitution. That's a 16. 14. So it saved. Uh, Crispy did not save. God damn it. <laughs> wow, I rolled really good on the damage, too. Oh, uh, man. Sorry, Crispy. So Shit happened. 36. What? <laughs> what? It's 4d10 of damage, and I rolled, like, incredible. That's wow. real good. That is a good roll. Yes. Remember this day because this is what spell was that? Sickening radius, radiance. Thanks. I just want to. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know it that well. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Remember this day because it's rare that I don't know what the statistical probability of rolling on the high end of that is, but it's probably pretty low. Um, so anytime you roll low on your damage just remember this yeah day. yeah the only reason i did it is because it says this light makes it impossible for the creature to benefit from being invisible what about the light and any levels of exhaustion caused by this wow. spell go away when spells yeah what about oh yeah it suffers so you suffer a level of exhaustion too 
Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's the real kick to the pants. What about if you save? Uh, if you save, uh, let's see. What does it say? Let me let me just look. It doesn't it. say anything for save, just the slight yeah. It just says on a failed save and it says all that stuff I just told you. Yeah, it says must say must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take four D ten radiant damage and it suffers one level of exhaustion. This light makes it impossible for the creature to benefit from being invisible. The light in any levels of exhaustion oh, so I don't take any damage if I save? caused by this spell go yeah. away. No half damage. That is okay. for a fourth level spell. That's crazy. Never huh. mind on the damage for the doll. But crispy. What is it? Uh, and it's when the creature moves into the spells area for the first time or starts its turn there. So it keeps going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a concentration thing. And since yeah. since I can see that I hit Crispin with that, I just immediately stop it. You can't see that you hit me. I'm in the darkness. No, it. but it No, but it emits radiance though. And when you're hit by it, it, mm. it, it creates you to become radiant too. It doesn't it dispels it makes uh impossible for the creature to be invisible. It's not the creature's not invisible. It's covered in magical darkness. But what if it says, so it says, uh, the last thing it says, the light in any levels of, or sorry, it says when the creature is hit, they emit a dim greenish color light in a five foot radius. So like they, be, uh, they themselves become radiant sure. when they get hit by it. Uh, magic, and usually the spells that can essentially reject magical darkness will say so. Um, oh, okay. But let me just read over darkness again. Yeah, I think darkness is going to have the answer. Uh huh. Overlaps with an area of light created by a set spell of second level or lower, the, the light is dispelled. So in this case, the sickness light is a higher level yeah. spell than darkness yeah so yeah we'll say he's glowing okay so i see that and i telepathically yell to him or just tell him like get back to us otherwise you're gonna get hit by that again i'm also puking <laughs> blood <laughs> lots of it glowing it's glowing 36 36 all you have all you have to do is move like 10 feet backwards and you shouldn't get hit by it. <laughs> okay. Anything else? You heal. And in my bonus action, I'm going to roll some healing yeah, for him. Go ahead. So I'm going to do cure wounds. Uh, Your rod. Jesus, there's a lot of innuendo today. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, 11 with the cure wounds, and then I'll do two. I'll do two little guys. Uh... Wow, doing two little guys. <laughs> sorry. Of sexual innuendo. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. So, well, <laughs> what is this? Thirty-six. Yeah. Four. So I don't think I can. So I did four with the healing light, but then I don't think. Uh, I don't think I can. Cast and the action is the cure wounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cure, the bonus action is a, is a and your light goes healing through. light. Okay, so the the healing light. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so cure wounds is an at will thing. Can I do that while I'm concentrating? No, you can. Um, yeah, it's an action. That's the problem. You've, you've used your action. Yeah, to cast so the, I just sickness. Yeah, the bonus thing, sorry, you just heal four, and then got it. I'll cast Cure Wounds on you later. later. Uh, yeah, so Crispy's on one knee, holding his arms out in magical darkness. Next second, you're vi violently vomiting, glowing, <laughs> and you feel horrible. And then you feel a little bit better. 
<laughs> I'm all prepped for a mental assault, and all of a sudden, I'm you're like puking. You got one. You're <laughs> no, something attacked my bowels. And you're, and you're like, <laughs> getting green light. You're just like yeah. Whoa, sickly green light. On? Yeah. So you look like you look like you're like spewing like like Nickelodeon slime because it's like green. I'm, I'm confused. I'm unhappy. You're trying <laughs> I don't know a, what's going on. You're trying to catch an animated <laughs> evil doll. This is not what I expected <laughs> when I ran into the darkness whatsoever. You've been through the ringer the last couple of days. <laughs> That's true. Life of a monk. Um. And now it is Ficus's turn, who's terrified, and he's, this is so fucked up! And you've never heard him speak. He's usually, both of them, both of the Gizzerai usually speak in very segmented ways. And this is the first time you've heard Ficus just actually put together a really quick phrase, and it's, he's terrified, and he starts running out of the cavern. Where are you going? Cavern! Ah! That's his turn. <laughs> And wow. Raya is a fucking badass. And it's got a special ring that prevents things, so... Raya's gonna run and disappear. And gonna run into the darkness. And the sickness? Or the sickness, darkness. The sickness, the light. Anyways, uh, Raya runs in and tries to grapple the thing. Ooh! Well, if he does that, then he's going to get sick and in radius, too. Yep. Yeah. So what's the damage? Save. Is it the same? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think I... I'll yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just one roll, so people who yeah, go I, in there are just going to get 36 and yeah, don't, make the, don't make the save. Made the save. Um... Whew. But unfortunately, okay. can't use that good roll to make the grapple now, so we'll have to roll again. So there's no way I could have just been like, hey, don't go in there. You're just going to have to make a Yeah, but she ignored constitution. you. He ignored Oh, him. okay. It, they. Fuck. Those are some crazy rolls. Um, anyways, you see Raya... Maybe not crispy, but uh, Raya grows in there and grabs a hold of the doll and says, Oh, a hug. I don't want a hug. I just want to play. And Raya is just gripping this thing. And um, that is... Where's your movement, Raya? Holy fuck. Yeah, gets out of there and is a good bit out. And... You've seen Crispy move really quickly, and this doll was moving extremely quickly. Raya was moving cartoonishly fast, faster than Crispy, uh, and now is essentially grappling the doll and um, is... The doll's going to try to escape because it's the top of the round, and then the, the uh, Raya is essentially... We need somewhere to, saying we need somewhere to put this thing. Okay, it's, maintains the grapple. Um, well, so he's out of that sphere of the sickening radius. So yep. yeah, so I'll, I just shut it off. I'll just uh, stop it. Yeah, Ash, it's you're next in line. All of you, the doll just went and tried to escape. Um, but you heard Raya say, we need somewhere to put this. So it's Ashwin's turn. Oh. Uh, hmm. Raya is... I guess we could... Holding I on. Guess, like we could put it in uh, a bag of holding. Okay, good. But uh, should we tie it up first? Or I mean, can you just chuck it in there? It would be good. It's a... It's not. It's not a real thing. Okay. Well, you I know don't what? Think it I'm. Breathes. So why are you grappling it? I don't think it breathes, but I it moves. 
Um, so that's it. If we put the rope on it, it could stop moving. The bag of holding. Sh she wants to put it in the bag of holding. Is what she's telling you. You can. Do you want not, not want to do that now, or this is I all do, happening just, very quickly? We'll just put it in the bag of holding. I don't trust this. This is a big. I told you so. Okay. But so, fine. Put it in the bag. Foom. Okay, it's in the bag of holding. You close it, and um, yeah, you're out of initiative. Sorry about that, Crispy. I cast um, I cast Cure Wounds on him, and I use that 11 that I rolled before for that. Already? And I'm just, like, dazed. Uh, the exhaustion goes away, I'm, but I'm still kind of dazed. I'm like, what? What the? Did it make any of you puke? That was... Ooh. No, I you were feel, right there in the I thick of it. still don't feel very good. Did we get it? Is it gone? It's an Ashwin's bag of holding completely uh, able to move all its arms and legs because we didn't tie it up. So when we take it out, we got to grapple it again. Oh, uh, that's fine, I guess. Or you just dump it in front of whatever that thing's. Oh, let's just go. Well, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> so we start walking. We start walking down the out of that hallway back down towards the other cavern where that giant thing is right yeah. the hall the yeah, earth through. and ficus yeah. joins you as soon as all that stops and is trying to act super like i don't know what happened it took control of me and it'll never happen again and it's just clearly disturbed that it lost control and uh raya is anxious to get back to and Prati just looks at him and goes, I'm going to make you play. Shut up. Shut up. You're just like my sister in limbo. Come on, give me a hug. <laughs> Knock it off. And Raya is just like, what the fuck? This guy is looking at him like, control yourself, dude. This, You're supposed to be a freaking... A freaking uh, high-level monk. You guys make your way back to the entrance of the the uh, Nothic cave, and you head in there, and you hear in your head, uh, did you find Dolly Dearest, Dolly Dearest, Dolly Dearest? And uh, what do you guys say? Maybe. Yeah, it's right here in this bag of holding. Oh, bring, it. <laughs> bring it. I must find the control, the control ring. Uh, and as you guys are making your way into the cave, you start to see books slowly just on the ground start to show up and more and more as you enter the cave. And finally, as you enter the main cave, you see tables on top of a floor covered with books of all kinds, most of which are destroyed. Uh, but the tables are cockeyed on this uneven surface. And um, you see a creature in a cloak but the most immediate thing you notice is eight foot long limbs arms and legs as this creature is walking over the books almost like a spider uh super gaunt thin appendages and um you see as it's looking kind of digging through stuff um a purple glow coming off of its eye when it faces you guys a purple amethyst color uh just glowing giant eye and um uh the vertical mouth and just clacking as it's trying to look for something and finally it it finds something in its super long arm and holds it up and uh in your heads, it says, "Drop it, drop it, drop it." I can, I, it, it won't get, the dolly dears won't get away. And it's just muttering other th unintelligible words uh, at that point. So we're we gonna give him back the doll. Ashwin squeaks and covers her eyes. I don't do spiders. <laughs> do spiders hiding behind Christine's uh... leg. Spider is being kind. 
I'll, I'll, well, since she's hiding behind my leg, I'll reach down behind me into her bag and pull out the doll. And just as I'm pulling it out, I'm not even going to try to grapple it. I'm just going to whip it um, at the Nafe. Easy, easy enough. And uh, just in case I wasn't clear about it, it's not a spider. It's got four legs. Spider like. But it's spider like. Okay. I just wasn't sure if. Um... That just kind of moves like up. a creepy right. spider. I'm out. <laughs> Ashwin is so out. Yeah, I'd be out too because I hate spiders. Um, I too hate spiders. Yeah. Does everyone hate spiders? Crispin's fine with them. Dave, do you hate and Prady, spiders? Prady just talks to his adventuring group and he just says, how can you tell if this guy's smiling? Like, is, <laughs> if it's vertical, then is it when his lips are that way, is he smiling? Or if it's, how do you know which way is a smile? It's so like toward look? his eye is a smile. Well, I think we're about to make him real happy giving him his doll. So just you look real close at what his mouth does, and I think you'll find out how he smiles. In anticipation of you throwing Dolly Dearest out, you hear its vertical teeth kind of <coughs> clicking together, uh, and you easy enough throw the doll out, and it goes, Play, I don't want to go home, and I don't want I just want to play. As it's flying through the air, and... Uh, the creature uh, puts the ring on, and the doll doesn't seem to be able to do anything, really, for the time being. And, uh, yeah. So, is it, do you say anything? Does the smile to... on the Nothic match the tattoo on Ashwin's back? No. These are all, oh, like, okay. needle-like, vertical... Uh, this thing's mouth is very straight. It goes down. Like, it's it's mm. eyeball, and then there's no nose. It's just vertical. And even the hood around the eye is kind of pronounced and kind of goes out like that. Okay, um, I had a visual of what that is, but I can't repeat that in polite company. <laughs> <laughs> is it related to bulge? Yes. Well, maybe a um, counterpart to the bulge. Okay, yeah. Uh, lots of in episode twenty eight in yendo episode. Um, Terrible. So yeah, what do you guys say to this thing, or do you wait for it to talk I, to you? I believe uh, we were promised another secret tower. Oh, secret! Do you want it? secret or tower? I gave you secrets. This one tower resisted. Secret of the tower. <laughs> oh, well. And it removes its cloak, and what you see is horrifying. Uh, it's a small, tiny body, probably four foot at one point long, the torso and the head, um, and these appendages sprouting out from it. And it crouches down, and you see this glowing area on its back. That looks like a teleportation circle. Oh. oh. I think we found the way to the oh. tower. Wow. And, and it says, what do you guys see? Just keep your eyes closed. You just you don't want to know. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, before we go, since we're in a place with a bunch of books, maybe we can find out what the hell's on my back. Yeah, if you want to ask him for another secret, go ahead and uh, whip your armor off and turn around. Hey, 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 creepy guy, do you know what this is? And like, I show him the thing on my back. My name is Prefix. Prefix is my name here. Uh, guys, do you guys want to go to the tower? What do you want? Do you want me to look at what? I want to look at some of these books. So as I said, they're very destroyed, but you'll have to spend a lot of time searching to find something. Uh, it's up to you. And he might not let you. If you want to try that, you can. Yeah, Prati walks over to some destroyed books and just starts leafing through them, just seeing what he can find. Uh, Orson's gonna without do the without same asking. Thing. Orson will do the same thing, only because I realize how rare this is. Okay. Uh, he... The thing immediately turns back and says, My secrets. Nothing there. I destroyed all the secrets I pulled out of them. If you keep looking, this will not go well. Crazy, 
crazy I am, I will eat your brains. This is all happening uh, telepathically. Oh, he force and stops. Yeah, Prady. Prady just drops the book, and then he just goes like, "Like, where did all this? Where did all the secrets go?" Like he just points at the the charred pages and just goes, "Where did they go?" Eraser took them, and some of them I destroyed. Can can one of you ask him if he kept any of them? I do, do you not like... share secrets. The secrets are my own. I share. All right. Well, I tried. Your secrets. Do you have a, something to trade, perhaps? We gave you the doll. And I am trading transportation. Hmm. Most do not get this far before I eat them. Do you like gold? No, I like magic secrets and magic items. Ooh, do you guys want to give him a bobble? Hmm. I don't have any bobbles. <laughs> any bobbles? Uh, I I have a I have a bobble or something that might be interesting. Wait. And he pulls it out. He pulls out of his unbag of holding the almanac arcana from many episodes ago. Yes, um, the one that uh, um, Obadiah Semple sold to you that is essentially kind of uh, index of of baubles and such. And yep. mm -hmm. uh, it says, let me see it. I don't know what it is. Oh, I have many of these. I am a subscriber. Oh, okay. Oh, there, there are others? Yes. Oh. Can I see? Oh. I'm, I know you're into, like, destroying things, but I'm curious. There are others? Like, where are they? They're everywhere. Can I grab another one of these? He starts pointing with his super long arm around you to the detritus laden floor full of ripped pages and it's just generally pointing like hey stupid like they're right there but it's just the biggest like a tornado has gone through a library oh okay uh orson decides that he's gonna go over there and still look because it's like okay if he's allowing him access to yeah. these things, there might be, there still might be something there. And then he, yeah. uh, Prady, Prady follows. Yeah, as long as you guys aren't like physically touching stuff, if you're just like looking down, he seems mm -hmm. to not have a. He does pick up like a few uh, pieces of paper only because like they're on top of other pieces of paper. I'm like, oh, okay. So he's like looking at things maybe there might be some other just interesting information uh, that's out there do you continue doing it when he immediately snaps to you guys who if as soon as you touch it and say something or like oh uh if he if he snaps and i the only thing or explains like i'm just moving pieces of paper so i could read look, because look. okay only looking so as i'm looking do i find anything interesting about the world that i wouldn't know otherwise um you find uh a lot of written handwritten notes in common and under common and gnomish that are gibberish for the most part some of it you get is like um parts of spells maybe uh huh. you think that you definitely know they're not complete, but, mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot, there's a lot of like crossed out stuff. So like research papers, um, and, uh, you see transformation written a lot and, mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, um, transmutation, stuff like that. Uh, mm -hmm. and it, you get the sense that this thing just spends its time trying to figure out how to revert to its former form to to kind of 
reverse the change that has taken place in it. Oh, wait. And I just look. It's like, are you trying to get back to your regular form? Is this a thing that you want? I don't know. I think I I do it out of... I don't... I just do it. Okay. I can try something. I don't know if it will work. What are you... I don't know what I was or what I should be. I just know well, my identity was different. Okay. But if I turned you into something that is humanoid-like for a little while, then you might be better able to look at these spells. And I'm not touching anything, but you can touch them, and you can figure out I what all these things are. Now. And okay. I don't want to be... I want to be me, but I don't know what it is. And it just starts getting, like, agitated, and, and uh, gibberish starts coming out, and clicking noises... And there's definitely an, an element of madness to this creature and uh, um, tension that it's always on the boiling point of a tantrum. Uh, uh, oh. So it's, it's a very, like, yeah, it's just very tenuous. You can tell this creature is just very agitated constantly and sometimes boils over uh mm -hmm. at the slightest thing all right then orson backs off like okay I, I made an offer to just try to help but i think i'm ready to Teleport. try that teleportation thing now quickly i grow impatient and it lowers itself down and the circle the glyphs on its back glow and uh, who's the first to hop on the back of this thing? I'll go on I'll be because it. I don't. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go first. <laughs> Orson, um, you hop on, and it's very weird. This thing is a lot stronger than you thought it would be in terms of the <laughs> the, the tension of the floor that you're standing on. Mm -hmm. the, the, this thing's back. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's um, feels like a very powerful creature and as you step on it not a moment later you feel the familiar feeling that you had recently and you are whoop, out uh, and I will tell you what you see after I figure out what everyone else is doing Prati puts his puts his arm over Ashwin and just kind of like walks her over to the to just the uh, telephone because she's still got her eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> so we both we both walk up onto the teleporter together. So and... Ashwin, as you are walking with Prati, you hear heavy breathing louder and louder. And it's like... No, 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 no. Let's go. <laughs> Trust me, it's a little, he's a lot creepier than he sounds. That doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> I'm jumping in. Yeah, you guys step on and you're out and it's just you crispy and the two fellow restilzen uh monk mm -hmm. so i look to them and say are you joining us in the tower no sounds like that's where they're at sounds like that's where the illithid are we do not think the illithid are there the illithid have something under the the ground that we must scout out first we think the all right to the there. east or something that's right, else, that's right. but we don't think an elder brain would wish to be that high in the air. We've never heard of anything in our histories that have described elder brains being nothing but closer to the ground if they can. They go deep and they stay deep. Well, in that case, thank you for what you've shown me, and I hold out my hand for a handshake to them. And just to Zerthraya, not to Zerthvikus. He's a dick. Um, <laughs> Zerthvikus <laughs> scoffs at you when you hold out your hand. And uh, Raya says, we will train in the future. You will know when. Use the shard well, and we will, uh, we will uh, train. Yeah, he says. Um, Looking forward to it. And they disappear into the darkness of books and such while this creepy little doll watches this all go on. 
and you hop on the back of this thing and mm -hmm. and what you all see is this huge room uh crystal room and you see crystal desks and glowing lights streaking through the crystals and you see a tiny tiny little gnome with a I, uh, work seems to be working. You're seeing the profile of him from the side. Seems to be working on some chemicals or whatnot. Uh, alchemy, excuse me. And um, he turns to you and says, Oh, you made it. Welcome to my tower. I'm Felix Tricknips. Have a seat. And that's where we're going to leave it for this week. Nice. Yay. All right. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to be like turn to Ashwin and be like, I told you I was gonna talk to Trips. <laughs> we can do that next next time. Uh but uh let's go around the table and plug your stuff. Uh let's start with you, Ryan. All right. This is Ryan Omega. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook under Ryan Omega, on Twitter under Ryan OMGA. And this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time on twitch.tv slash scabby rooster will be my season finale of Blank Slate, a LARP murder mystery that's gone very Game of Thrones and Sandman combination at once. But we'll see what happens. I don't even know what, what's going to happen at the end. Ryan, can I um, have a little bit more control, more votes or something in exchange <laughs> for uh, unlimited warlock pack slots, perhaps? <laughs> sounds like a real good deal. <laughs> yeah. okay. That sounds like an amazing deal. <laughs> uh, I'm obviously joking, but uh, let's go to you, Lex. Hey, I'm Lex. You can find me on Instagram at it's period underscore period lex or on twitter at it be lex come say hi cool dave hey you can just find me at uh on twitter or instagram at drod3 and nothing to plug right now have a good uh rest of your weekend guys and uh, i am jake friday i'm the dm you can find me on twitter at, at jake friday on instagram at jake of the friday and I'm playing in a game soon, but I forgot which one. I think it's a Deadlands game. Uh, but you can follow me on Twitter to find out when that is. Uh, and uh, follow Venture Ventures and, yeah, on Instagram and Twitter, at Venture Ventures. Brian. And I'm Brian, and you can't find me on the internet anywhere. Good luck finding me. Challenge yourself. <laughs> just kidding. I am there. No. Just not very <laughs> present. Um, you probably can find me because I don't devote a lot of my energy anyway. He's CIA. I'm just here to play Dandy. Perfect. He's got He's a ghost. They call him the king of LinkedIn. So <laughs> I don't have a LinkedIn. You will not find me there. The king of Zeusk. <laughs> you looked in the wrong place. <laughs> um, perfect. Join us again next time. Uh, and, um, yeah, be good to yourself, be good to others, and see you guys later!